God. Dr. Seward, what is it? Why have you sent for me? My dear John, I told you in my wire there was nothing new. You said no change, not to worry, but to come at once. And you lost no time. I jumped in a car and burned up the road from London. Surely there must be something more we can do for Lucy. I'd give my life gladly if it would save her. I'm sure you would, my boy. You love her with the warm blood of you. But don't forget, I love my daughter too. She's all I have. You must see that nothing medical science can suggest has been left undone. Medical science couldn't do much for me now. Poor me. Yes, poor me. She died after the same incredible symptoms that my Lucy has developed. My Lucy too. Our Lucy then. <laughs> Good God, what's that? Only Renfield, a patient of mine. But you never keep violent patients here in your sanatorium. Lucy mustn't be compelled to listen to raving madmen. I quite agree, and I'm going to have him sent away. Until just lately, he was always quiet. I'll be sorry to lose him. What? An unusual taste. Zoophagus. What's that? A life-eating maniac. What? Yes, he thinks that by absorbing lives, he can prolong his own life. Good Lord. Catches flies and eats them. And by way of change, he feeds flies to spiders. Fattens them up. Then he eats the spiders. Good <laughs> God, how disgusting. But tell me about Lucy. What, why have you sent for me? Yesterday I wired to Holland for my old friend Van Helsing. He'll be here soon. The car has gone down to the station for him now. I'm going to turn Lucy's case over to him. Another specialist or anemia? No, my boy, whatever this may be, it's not anemia. And this man who speaks a dozen languages as well as his own knows more about mysterious diseases than anyone alive. Heavens knows it's mysterious enough, but surely the symptoms are clear. So were poor Venus, perfectly clear. <coughs> there they are, at it again. Every dog for a mile around. They seem howls of terror. We've heard that chorus every night since Mina fell ill. I was traveling in Russia, and the dogs in the village barked like that. The natives always said that there were wolves prowling about. <laughs> I hardly think you'll find wolves prowling around Pearly, 20 miles from London. Yet your house might be in a wilderness. Nothing in sight except for that place Carfax that Count Dracula has taken. Your friend the Count came in again last evening. Oh, he's no friend of mine. Don't say that. He knows that you and I gave our blood for Lucy, as well as for me. And he's offered to undergo transfusion himself if we need another volunteer. Oh, Joe, that, that's thwarting of him. I see I've misjudged him. <laughs> he seems uh, genuinely interested in Lucy. If he were a young man, well, I'd think. Uh, but his whole attitude shows that it isn't that. We need sympathy in this house, John, and I'm grateful for it. Well, so am I. But anybody who offers to help Lucy can have anything I've got. Well, I think he does help me. She always seems cheered up when he comes. That's fine. Well, may I go to Lucy now? We'll go together. Oh, that must be Ben Helsing. You go on ahead then, Doc. I'll come presently. Professor Ben Helsing. My dear Van Helsing, I can never be paid for this. Were it only a patient of yours instead of your daughter, I would have come. You once rendered me a service. Don't speak of that. You'd have done it for me. Let me give you something to eat. Oh, no. I've dined on the boat train. I do not like to waste time when there is work to do. Now, Van Helsing, you cast the old spell on me. <coughs> I lean on you before you have been two minutes in my house. <laughs> You wrote me of your daughter's symptoms, but tell me more of the other young lady, the one who died. Poor Mina West. As she was a girl just Lucy's age, they were inseparable. She was on a visit here when she fell ill. As I wrote you, she just grew weaker. Day by day, she wasted away. There um, were no anemic <coughs> symptoms. And her blood was normal when analyzed. Ah, you said you performed transfusion. <laughs> yes, Sir William Briggs ordered that. Uh, you see here, this mark. Well, Lucy herself and her fiancé John Harker gave their blood as well. So, three transfusions. And the effect? She rallied after each. The color returned to her cheeks. 
but by the next morning she was pale and weak again. She complained of bad dreams. Ten days ago we found her in a stupor from which nothing could rouse her. She died. And the other symptoms? None, except for those two little marks on the throat that I wrote you about. And which perhaps brought me here so quickly. What were they like? Just two little white dots with red centers. Uh, we decided she must have run a safety pin through the skin of her throat, uh, trying in her delirium to fasten a scar or shawl. Perhaps. And you say your daughter has the same symptoms? Precisely. She too speaks of bad dreams. Van Helsing, you lived in the tropics. May this not be something alien to our medical experience in England? It may very well be, my friend. <laughs> Redfield, how did you... Who is this man? One of my patients. This is gross carelessness. Did you hear us talking? <laughs> words, words, words. Come, come. How did you get out of your room? <laughs> Wouldn't you like to know? How are the flies? Mr. Renfield makes a hobby of eating flies. I'm afraid you eat spiders sometimes too, don't you, Renfield? Will you walk into my parlor, said the spider to the fly. Excuse me, doctor. You have not introduced me to your friend. Come, come, Renfield. I'll oh, humor him. Tell the attendant to come here at once. Yes, sir. Oh, very well. Professor Van Helsing, Mr. Renfield, a patient of mine. Ah, who does not know of Van Helsing? Your work, sir, in investigating certain obscure diseases, not fully unconnected forces and powers that the ignorant herd do not believe exist. As when you position that posterity will recognize. Butterworth, you have let your patient leave his room again. Why me, sir? I locked him in his room and I got the key right here in me book it. But this is the second time. Only last night you let him escape and he tried to break into Count Dracula's house across the ground. But he didn't get out the door and it's a 30 foot drop out the wonder. He's just a blooming eel. Here, Hugh, come with me. <laughs> Renfield, if this happens again, you get no more sugar to spread out for your flies. Flies? What do I care for flies? Now, flies, flies are but poor things. A low form of life beneath my nervous. I don't care a pin for flies. Oh, don't you? Any more of your tricks, and I'll take you to a spider at once. Oh, no! Please see Mr. Butterworth. Please leave me my spider. He's getting so nice and fat. I've just had another dozen flies. It'll be just right. Just right! Oh, come, oh, Mr. Renfield. What makes you want to eat flies? The wings of a fly, my dear sir, typify the aerial powers of psychic faculties. Uh, Butterworth. Take him away. Oh, one moment, my friend. And the spiders? Professor Van Helsing, can you tell me why that one great spider lived for centuries in the tower of the old Spanish church? And grew. And grew. He never ate. But he drank. And he drank. He would come down and drink the oil of all the church lamps. What all were? One moment. To see what I want you to send me away. Now, tonight, in a straight waistcoat, chain me so I can't escape. This is a sanatorium, not a lunatic asylum. This is no place for me. And my cries will disturb Miss Lucy, who is ill. It will give your daughter bad dreams, Dr. Seward. Bad dreams. We'll see about all this in the <coughs> morning. Then why are you so anxious to leave this place? I'll tell you. A fool, Seward, you wouldn't understand, but you, you would understand. Oh, master! I wasn't going to say anything! What was that? It was a bat, gentlemen. Only a bat. Did you know 
that in some islands of the eastern seas, the bats which hang on trees all night. When the heat is stifling and the sailors sleep on the decks of those harbors, in the morning they are found dead men, white, even as Miss Mina was. What do you know of Miss Mina? Take him to his room. Please! Why are you so anxious to be moved from this place? To save my soul! Yes! Oh! You get nothing more out of me than that. And I'm not sure I hadn't rather stay. After all, what is my soul good for? Is not what I am to receive worth the loss of my soul? What's got him to thinking about souls? Have you the souls of those flies and spiders oh, on your conscience? I forbid you to plague me about souls! I don't want their souls! All I want is their life! The blood is the life! So? That's in the Bible. But you saw souls to me. I couldn't eat them or drink. Or drink? Ah! You know too much to live that nothing! I warned you to send me away, Dr. Seward. If you don't, you must answer for my soul before the judgment seat of God. <laughs>
this is it. Now, tell me, uh, when did this, uh, this weakness first come upon you? Two nights after poor Mina was buried, I had a bad dream. A bad dream, huh? Tell me about it. I remember hearing dogs barking before I fell asleep. The air seemed oppressive. I lit the reading lamp next to my bed. But when the dream came, there seemed to come a mist into the room. Oh, was the window open? Yes, I always sleep with my window open. Uh, well, of course. You are English. Oh, we continentals are not so particular about fresh air. Please, please, go on. The mist was so thick, I, I could just see the lamp by my bed. A tiny spark in the fog. And then... <coughs> I saw two red eyes staring at me and a livid white face looking down at me from out of the mist. It was horrible, horrible. Ah, uh, uh, there, 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 there. It is all right. It is all right. Please. Please, go on. Next morning, my maid could scarcely wake me. I felt weak and languid. Some part of my life seemed to have gone from me. There have been other such dreams? Nearly every night since comes the mist. Those red eyes and that awful face. There, there, there. We've Sorry. tried transfusion twice. Both times she recovered her strength. So then would come another dream. Now I dread the night. I know it sounds absurd, Professor, but please do not laugh at me. Oh, I am not likely to laugh. No. No, no. Oh, no. Please. please. <coughs> How long have you had these little marks on your throat? It's that first morning. Lucy, why didn't you tell us? Lucy, you wore that scarf around your throat to hide them. Ah, do not press her. Do not excite her. Well? <clears throat> didn't want to worry you, for I knew that poor Mina had them. Quite right, Miss Lucy. Quite right. They are nothing. <laughs> And old Van Helsing will see that these dreams trouble you no more. Count Dracula. Oh, good evening, Count. Gentlemen. Miss Seward, how are you? You are looking much more yourself this evening. I'm feeling better already, Count. Now that Father's old friend has come to help me. Uh, Count Dracula, Professor Van Helsing. The most distinguished scientist whose name we know even in the wilds of Transylvania. But they interrupt the consultation. Uh, not at all, Count. It's good of you to come. We appreciate your motives. And Dr. Seward has just told me of your offer, and I can't thank you enough. It is not. I should be grateful to be permitted to help Miss Seward in any way possible. But you do, Count. I look forward to your visits. They seem to make me better. <laughs> and so I arrived to find a rival in the field. You encourage me, Miss Seward, to make them more frequent, as I should like. I always enjoy seeing you. Yes, but you have been lonely here, and my efforts to amuse you with our old tales will no longer have the same success now that you have Professor Van Helsing and now that Mr. Harker is to remain here. How did you know I was going to stay, Count? Can the gallant lover ask such a question? I am fair, my friend. Well, you're right. Nothing is going to shift me now until Lucy's as fit as a fiddle again. Nothing. Please come as before, Count, won't you? You understand, you are not to answer bells. She must not be left alone under any circumstances for a single moment, you understand? Yes, sir. Ah, good. Ah, your maid will take you to your room. <coughs> Try to rest for a little, huh? While I talk with your father. Wells, remember, don't leave her alone for a moment. Oh, no, sir. Professor Van Helsing, so you have come from the land of the Tulip to cure the nervous prostration of this young girl. I wish you all the success. Ah, uh, thank you, Count. Though I appear officious, Dr. Seward, I am a lonely man and you are my only neighbors when I'm here in the car taxi. Your trouble has touched me greatly. 
Count, I am more grateful for your civility than I can say. Uh, you, like myself, Count, are a stranger in England? Yes, but I love England and the great London. So different than my own Transylvania, where there are so few people and so little opportunity. Opportunity, Count? For my investigation. I hope you haven't regretted buying that old ruin across there. Carfax is not the ruins. The dust was somewhat deep, but we are used to dust in Transylvania. Are you planning to remain in England, Count? I think so, my friend. The walls of my castle are broken and the shadows are many. I am the last of my race. It's an only spot you've chosen, Carfax. It is. And when I hear the dogs howling far and near, I think myself back in my castle Draco with its broken battlements. Uh, the dogs howl there when there are wolves about, don't they? <clears throat> yes, they do. They howl here as well, although there are no wolves present. But you wish to consult the anxious father and the great specialist. May I read a book in your study? I'm so anxious to hear what the professor has to say, to learn if I can be of any help. By all means, come. Very kind of Dracula with his damned untimely friendliness, but now what about my daughter? Yes, professor, what do you think is the matter with Lucy? The patient. That interesting red theory does not like the smell of wolf's bait. Good heavens, what's that got to do with Lucy? Perhaps nothing. In God's name, Professor, is there anything unnatural or occult about this business? Occult? Ben Helsing. Ah, uh, oh. Seward, let me remind you that the superstitions of today are the scientific facts of tomorrow. Ha, science can now transmute the electron, <coughs> the basis of all matter, into energy. And what is that but the dematerialization of matter? And yet, dematerialization has been known and practiced in India for centuries. Ah, Java, I myself have seen things. <laughs> My dear old friend, you can't have filled up your fine old brain with Eastern moonshine. <coughs> moonshine? But anyway, come now, what about my daughter? So, if you won't listen to what will be harder to believe than, than any Eastern moonshine, if, if you won't forget your textbooks, I... Uh, keep an open mind and sewer. Your daughter's very life may pay for your pig-headedness. Go on, go on, Professor. I am listening, and I must ask you to listen calmly to what I have to say. So please, sit, sit. <coughs> ah. You have both heard the legends of Central Europe about, about werewolves, the vampire. You mean ghosts who suck the blood of the living? No, if you wish to call them ghosts, I prefer to call them the undead. For God's sake, man, are you suggesting that Mina, and now Lucy, is Of course, I have read these horror tales of the Middle Ages, Van Helsing, but I know you better than to suppose that you... That I believe in them? I do believe in them. You mean to tell us that vampires actually exist and, and that, that Mina and Lucy have been attacked by one? Your English doctors would all laugh at such a theory. Your police, your public would laugh. The strength of the vampire is that people will not believe in him. Is this the help you bring us? Do not despise it, Dr. Seward. In this case, is strong to all your specialists. Go on, Professor. Ah, vampires are rare. Nature abhors them. The forces of good combine to destroy them, but a few of these creatures have managed to live on for centuries. What is a vampire? Ah, a vampire, my friend, is a man or a woman who is dead, and yet not dead. A thing that lives on after its death by drinking the blood of the living. It must have blood or it dies. Now, its power lasts only from sunset to sunrise. During the day, it must rest in the earth in which it was buried. But at night, it has the power to prey upon the living. My friend, you are thinking you are going to have to put me amongst your patients. Van Helsing, I don't know what to think, but I confess that I simply can't follow you. Uh, Professor, what makes you think that Lucy's been attacked by such a creature? Ah, 
Dr. Seward's written account of these young ladies' symptoms at once aroused my suspicions. Anemia? The blood of three men was forced into Miss Nina's veins, and yet she died from loss of blood. Where did it go? Had your specialist any answer? Ah, a vampire attacks the throat. He leaves two little wounds, white with red centers. Soon, you wrote me of those two marks on Miss Nina's neck. An accident with a safety pin, you said. Ah, so I thought, I suspected, I did not know, but I came on the instant. And what do I find? Same wounds on Miss Lucy's neck. Another safety pin, Dr. Seward? Do you mean to say that you have built up all of this nightmare out of a safety pin? It's true I can't make out why she hid those marks from us. I could tell you that. What? I don't believe it. Of course Lucy's trouble can't be that. Why do you mean This theory accounts for all the facts that nobody's been able to explain. We'll take her away where this thing cannot get at her. Uh, she will not want to go. What? But if you try to force her, the shock may prove fatal. But why won't she leave if we tell her her life depends on it? Because the victim of the vampire becomes his creature, linked to him in life and after death. Professor, this is too much. Have you see, become an unclean thing? A demon? Yes, Hark. Now. Will you help me? Yes. Anything. Just tell me what to do. Our ours would be a dangerous job. Our lives would be at stake. But so is Miss Lucy's life. So is her soul. We must stamp out this monster. But how do we stamp it out now? Ah, this undead thing must sleep by day in the earth or tomb in which it was buried. A corpse in a coffin. A corpse, if you like. But a living corpse, sustained by the blood of the living. We can find its earth home, a stake driven through the vampire's heart, will destroy it. But this is our task. In such a case, the police, all the powers of society are, are as helpless as the doctors. And what good are bars or chains against a creature that can turn itself into a wolf or a bat? A wolf? Dr. Seward, there's dogs howling. I told you they howl that way when there's a wolf about. And a bat? Renfield said there was a bat. Well, what of it? Rent Renfield does not like the smell of wolf's bane. What in the world has your wolf's bane to do with all this? A vampire cannot stand the smell of wolf's bane. Oh, you suspect that lunatic? Oh, I suspect no one and everyone. Who is this uh, Count Dracula? Dracula? We really know very little about him. When I was traveling in Transylvania, I learned of a, a castle Dracul. Mr. Voivod Dracul who fought the Turks in their centuries ago. Uh, I will make inquiries by telegraph. Now, oh, but this thing, after all, must be English, or at least have died here. Yeah. His lair must be near enough to this house that he can return to his tomb before sunrise. Oh, my friend, I have only the old beliefs with which to fight this, this monster that has the strength of twenty men. Perhaps the accumulated wisdom and cunning of centuries. This is a nightmare. But I'm with you, Professor. And you, Dr. Seward. It all seems preposterous to me. But everyone else has failed. The case is in your hands at present. I need allies, not neutrals. Very well, then. Do what you will. Good. Now, bring your thoughts out here. What are you going to do? going to set the trap. Miss Lucy is going to be the baby. Oh my God, man, we cannot let you do that. Oh, it is the only way. I believe that this thing knows that I plan to protect her, and this will put it on its guard. So, the very moment that she is alone, it will try to get at her, for this, this undead thing must have blood, or its life in death ceases. No, no, I forbid this. She's my daughter, and I consent. We'll show the professor. He's mistaken. Only allow it because you do not believe. No, I do believe. Oh my God! I put that lunatic laugh. Life eating, you said it was, and you subject Lucy to that risk. Look, I must be master here, or I can do nothing. I must know in what form this thing comes before I can plan on how to wipe it out. So, bring your daughter here.
pardon, sir. He's not to sue in here. Well, what do you want with him? The whole flight catch has escaped again, sir. Escaped? How? How? I mean, out the window. The door is still locked. I was in the corridor all the while. That's a 30-foot drop down to the stolen flagging. That loony's a blooming flying squirrel, he is. <laughs> Say nothing to Dr. Seward at present. Nothing, you understand? Yes, sir. You see, you have nothing to fear. I want you to lie down here, my dear. Uh, 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 you trust me, do you not? I want you to lie here for just a little while. But I'm so frightened. Shh, shh, shh. Make your mind passive. Try not to think. Sleep if you can. I dare not sleep. It is when I sleep that... Shh. I know, my dear. I know. But I am going to cure you. God's help. Father. You must do as the professor says. Come, Harker. <clears throat> Harker, come. Well, it seems to me someone will be coming after you in a minute, you and your spiders. 
I say, this is a queer neighborhood. What a drop to the ground that is. You don't have to be afraid of burglars, do you? No way of getting up here unless they fly. Don't you ever get the feeling lonesome like a bit? Out there on your nights off? Just lately I have a bit. I never noticed the trees had such shadows before. Well, if you happen to need an escort, miss, I'd be out. I'll not walk with you in your uniform. People might take me for one of your loonies. You must be then tomorrow night. I say you haven't wasted much time, have you? Oh, I've had my eye on you. Well, better keep that eye on your loony or you'll be looking for a new job. Here, you buzz off. Your governor will be here in any minute. And go find your loony. Oh, all right. But I've got something here that'll tempt him back to his room. Why, what is that? <laughs> this here. <laughs> oh, take that away, take that away. <laughs> Go on, Cuthbert. Oh. We ain't too popular. Some people have no sense of humor. What was that? Oh, pardon, sir. He, he frightened me of that animal. Animal? What animal? A white mouse, sir. You mustn't scream. Not in this house now. I'm sorry, sir, but that nasty little beast. You were wrong, Miss Lucy, so. She's dreadfully upset as it is by something in the paper. Oh, do you mean the half-step horse, sir? Uh, the lady in white who gives tacos to look... Never mind that. But I will not have <coughs> Miss Lucy disturbed.
Everything just the same? Ah. When I leave this house, even for a few hours, I dread which I may find when I come back. Well, you may, my friend. All the situated help us. Without you, there'd be no hope. This morning, Professor, when you opened up your veins to revive Lucy again, ah, it was the least I could do. So weak. Pale and two little wounds open fresh again. Well, I have prepared a stronger defense. Our main task now is that defense, but attack. So, what have you found in London? Well, all of it. If it says what it means, whether it's been in use. I too have found something of which I can make nothing. Oh, John, that's what we have. Yes. We must try to piece together what we have learned today. Now, my colleague in Bucharest wires that the Dracula family has been extinct for 500 years. Khan the Count be an imposter? The castle he claims as his own is a desolate ruin near the border. Ah, it was built, as you said, Harker, by the terrible voivode Dracul himself, who was said to have dealings with evil spirits. He was the last of his race. Ah, ah but for many generations, the peasants have believed Castle Dracula to be inhabited by a vampire. Then it must be he. My friends, I am bewildered. But surely this confirms your suspicions. I was incredulous till I saw that creature hovering over Lucy. A vampire from Transylvania cannot be in England. But why? Because, as I have said, the vampire must rest by day in the soil in which the corpse it inhabits was buried. In the soil. Must have returned to its burial place by sunrise. I found today the Dracula arrived at the Croydon Airdrome in a three-engine German plane on March 6th. March the 6th? Three days before Mina first was taken ill. This plane made a non-stop flight from Seekley in Transylvania. It left just after sunset. It arrived two hours before dawn. It carried only the count and six packing cases. Did you learn what was in those cases? He told the customs people he wanted to see if Transylvania plants would grow in a foreign climate in their native soil. Soil? What was in those boxes? Just plain dirt! He left the lorry in the six coffin-like boxes before sunrise. Oh, yes. Before sunrise. The king of the vampires, my friends. Is the terrible boy Lord Dracul himself? And, and in his satanic pride and contempt, he even uses his own name. For who could suspect? For 500 years, he has been fettered to his castle because he must sleep by day in his graveyard. Five centuries pass. The aeroplane is invented, and now his chance has come. He can cross Europe in a single night. He failed. Six coffins with the soil in which he must rest by day. He left his castle after sunset. By dawn, he is in London and safe in one of his boxes. Oh, a terrible risk. But he has succeeded. For he has reached London with its teeming mill. Five of his boxes and 
throws them against him and yet cannot find the sixth. Well, then he will retreat to that sixth box and seal himself there and hide where we can never find him and sleep until we are all dead. Well, then Lucy will be safe. In her lifetime, yes. But his unclean kiss has already claimed her for his own. When she dies, she will become as he is. Now, Vampire can wait. No, my friend, there is only one way to save her from him, and that is to destroy him. You're right. As always, you have one great advantage. <coughs> by day, he is a coffin corpse. If I've searched by day, he can know nothing. If we leave no traces, God is delayed. He must make the rounds of his houses and find all six boxes. Then we can act. What are the caretakers or servants? When the houses will be empty, the vampire plays a lone hand. <laughs> Red Theo's been here the whole time we've been talking. Did you hear what we were saying, man? Yes, I heard something. <coughs> Enough. Be guided by what he says. It's your only hope. It's her only hope. It's my only hope. Save my soul. Save my soul. I am weak. You are strong. I am crazy. You are sane, you are good, and he is evil. I will save you, Renfield. <laughs> but first, you must tell me what you know. Everything. <laughs> no, what should I know? You say that I am mad, and the doctor will tell you all about that. You mustn't pay attention to anything I say. We can't waste time with this fellow. I'll have him taken away. Fool! Fool! And I thought you were wise. The whole world is mad just now, and if you want help, you must come to a madman to get it. Uh, uh, but I'll not give it to you, I'm afraid. A wise madman will obey him who is strong and not weak. Him? Who do you mean? Need we mention names among friends? Come, Professor, be reasonable. What have I got to gain by being on your side? The doctor keeps me shut up all day, and if I'm good, he gives me a little sugar spread out on my flies. On the other hand, if I serve him... The blood is the life they went with? What have you to do with Count Dracula? Dracula! Oh, I never heard that name before. Lying madly, Professor, lack of power to discriminate between truth and falsehood. So I take no offense at what most men would call the front. Send me away. I asked you to before, and you wouldn't. If only you knew what has happened since then. I did not tell you more. I did not. I should die in torment if I betrayed. Dr. Seward will send you away if you tell us what you know. Yes. Grandpa, I offer you your soul in exchange for what you know. God will not damn a poor lunatic soul. God knows the devil is too strong for us who are weak minds. But send me away. I want you to promise, Dr. Seward, if you will speak. Come, come, Renfield. Then I will tell you. Count Dracula is... Oh, master! I didn't say anything! I knew up to you and your slave! Oh, oh, there's a big bat lying in a circle! It's gone! <laughs> That's true. 
You wouldn't go if they tried to drag me away, would you? It's too late. What a fool I am. I shall be punished for this and I can't do any good. It's too late. You are so young. <clears throat> so beautiful. So pure. Even I have decent feelings sometimes, and I must tell you, if you don't go, your soul will pay for it. You're in the power of one who is greater than us. Professor. 
more effective than wolf spain counts. Indeed. Ah! 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 A dispensation.
released from this horror, will be with God. How can you do this? Do not ask me. Professor, if you can save me and soul after her death, can you save mine? Oh, Lucy, I will save you. I swear it with God's help. And he has given me a sign here tonight in this room. Then promise me one thing. Whatever you plan to do, whatever you know, do not tell me. <coughs> not even if I beg you to. Swear to me that you will not. Now, will I am still yours? Will I myself promise it? I promise it. No. No, John, you mustn't kiss me. Promise that you will not. Not even if I beg you to. I promise, Miss Lucy. From tonight on, one of us will be awake all night here in this room next to your bedroom. All night. You're so good. And I will make the room safe for you. Your maid will stay with you. Doctor, I want you to roll these all around the window in the bedroom there, like this, around the edges, and especially about the lock. Please. I have made this wreath. Why, you wear this? No dreams can bother you. Swear to me that you will not take these off. I promise. Swear it on the cross. I swear it. Professor, surely the host is more powerful than this wolf's babe. Or will they leave the host with a nothing in honor? No, no, no. The host cannot be used where there has been pollution.
What is it? Anybody what wants me job sir can have it. <laughs> I know what I know and what I've seen I saw. And I occupy the first train and don't ask for no wages in lieu of notice. Where is Renfield? Well if you ask me, I says he's probably paying a little visit to hell. You've let him escape again. Look here, sir. I haven't, so to speak, resigned. I don't have to put up with any more from any of you. What a man can't help, he can't help, and that's that. God, man, can't you see Dr. Stewart is not well? Will you desert him at a time when he needs all the help he can get? Well, I'll put it that way, sir. I ain't the kind of man that runs under fire, but I'm sick and tired of being told off for what ain't been full. Ah, we do not blame you. No boats or bars could hold Renfield. Now, sir, you're talking sense. I had him in a straitjacket this time. And nearly all yesterday I worked at clamping bars across the window. Now I find them bars pulled apart like they was made of cheese and then gone. Well, find him then. Find him, sir. Find him? I can't chase him up and down that wall. I ain't no bloody mouthing goat. <laughs> the thing marks us. A few hours after he learns what we know and what we have done, he comes here and drags that poor unfortunate creature of his to himself. What can the vampire want with Renfield? Renfield is serving an apprenticeship to serve the vampire king when he dies. But what does Renfield matter? Oh, if we are beaten, then there is no God. We must not despair, Seward. To figure out in advance what anyone would do who got on his track. I thought we had him when we broke into Carfax and found the two earth boxes there, and then found one in each of the other four houses. <coughs> then I was trying up the lid of that sixth box. I was sure that we would find him there, helpless, empty, an empty packing case, left as a blind. He only brought six in his plate. So there can be only one left. Only one? But he didn't guard those where. <laughs> now we have put him on his guard. Yes. It's not half an hour till sunrise. Poor John has been sitting up for nine hours with Lucy. She'll be safe at dawn and he can't get some anyone can sleep in this house. Whoever else sleeps or does not sleep, Miss Lucy will sleep at dawn. Another hour? Oh, you've noticed how she keeps awake all night now and sleeps during the day? Is that part of the change? Yes. And sometimes, sometimes the look that comes into her face. Don't, man, for God's sake, I can't bear it. Must face it, man, for her sake. Huh? How could it have gone at her? with the wolf's bane and the cross around her neck. Suggestions conveyed from the monster. Yes. Yes, somehow, somehow he, he impelled the maid to remove the wolf's bane and the cross and to open the windows. Ah, I should have foreseen this. Don't play yourself. The devil is more cunning than we are. And yet, Lucy seems better. Until this last attack, she's always been exhausted. But at sunset, last night, when she awoke after sleeping all day, there was blood in her cheeks again. Yes, thank God. My friend, where does that blood come from? What do you suggest now? What fresh horror do you... It's not half past five in the morning, a strange hour, for men who are crazy to be up and about. We may get help from this thing that is still half human. Renfield! He's after me! He's going to kill me! Ah, but if you help us, we can save you! You! You poor, puny man! You measure your brains against his? I don't know what you're dealing with. You They get a Dutchman, and a fool of an eldest, and they uncover a boy! Why? Now all the soldiers and police in London can stop the master from doing as he likes. But God can stop him. God permits evil. Why does he permit evil if he is good? 
Tell me that. How did you escape through those iron bars? Bad men have great strength, Chapter. Come, Redfield. We know that you did not wrench those bars apart yourself. No, I didn't. I wanted them there. I hope they keep him out. He did it. And he called me, and I had to come. The master is angry. He promised me eternal life. And live things, live things, big ones, not flies and spiders, and blood to drink. Always blood. I must obey him, but I don't want to be like him. I am mad, I know that too, for I have taken lives, but they're only little lives. I'm not like him. I wouldn't like human life. And why did I seek to betray him? For you. I said I'd serve the devil, but I didn't serve him honestly. I don't like women with no blood in them. <laughs> yet I warned you and made him angry. And now, perhaps he will kill me. <laughs> There'll be no more live things to eat. There'll be no more blood. I'm unclean. 
In my eyes, you are purity itself. You love her. And in love, there is truth. She is pure. And this unclean thing that has entered you shall be rooted out, I swear it. You said that you could save me the soul. Me the soul is in heaven. Tell me how. It is your right to know. Now. I entered her tomb. I opened her coffin. And I found her there. Sleeping. But not dead. Not. Not truly dead. There was. There was blood in her cheeks. A drop of blood, like a red ruby at the corner of her mouth. The stake and the hammer. I struck to the heart. A scream. A convulsion. And, and, and then, and then a look of peace. Came over her face when, when at last, God's help, I made her truly dead. If I die, swear that you will do this to my body. It shall be done. I swear it. And I. My father, my lover, my dear friend, you have sworn to save my soul. Now I am done with life. I cannot live on to become what you know. Oh, Miss Lucy, by all that is sacred, you must not even think of suicide. To do that would put you in his power forever. I cannot face this horror that I'm becoming. We will find this thing. It has fouled your life. Destroy it. Sin is so to burning hell. It shall be by my hand. You must destroy him if you can. But with pity in your hearts, not rage and vengeance. This poor soul that has done so much evil needs our prayers more than any other. No, you, you can all ask me to forgive. Perhaps I too will need your prayers and your pity. It's Lucy. Now, while you are yourself, you must help me. How can I help you? No, don't tell me. You mustn't tell me anything. Each time that the white face and the red eyes came before, you were pale and exhausted afterwards. This last time. Last time. He said that I was his bride and that he would seal me to him for centuries to come. And then? <coughs> then. I can't tell you, I can't. But you must, you must, Lucy. Scratched open one of his veins, pressed my mouth down to it, called it a mystic sacrament. He made me, he made me drink. I can't, I can't go on. Poor friend, I tried to warn you. I broke in as soon as I heard the dogs howl. The dogs? Well, then the werewolf was about. He is out the rent field. We must do something! And at once, sir. Uh, I shall leave Renfield the way that I did Miss Lucy. And when that thing comes, we three shall bar the doors and window. Bar? Against that, even that has that thought. For we shall each carry the sacred element. Then, then, I do not know. <coughs> it will be terrible, for I do not know what its powers are. But, but this I know. In eight minutes the sun will rise. The coming of the day, the power of all evil things, must cease. Its last earth box is its only refuge. If we can keep it from that, it must collapse. And the stake and the hammer are ready. Ah, no! Then no! Yes, you must, uh, you must 
this will save your soul and perhaps even your life. No, 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 yes. no, 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 no. Now then, 
Ashes to ashes. 